What is up guys, Dane again. Today, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. Now, if you haven't heard, the Ford Focus, the most current generation that of course Ford is canceling, has a bit of a transmission issue. Yeah. So apparently, if you have a stick shift or if you have a Ford Focus ST, an RS, or even one of the Fiestas, if you're pretty much rowing your own gears, you're good. If you have a transmission that shifts the gears for you, namely the infamous power shift transmission, you're gonna have a bad time. Now, I do have a 2015 Ford Focus, and it does have that transmission. And you know what, to be honest, I do have bad times in it. So in this video, what I'm gonna explore is this weird trick I found about online. And honestly, I tested it out, and I'm gonna show you the results. I'm also gonna go over French what I achieved, which is, dare I say, a fixed transmission. Hmm. So, just gonna be showing you how to do it and also the whole theory behind it. And, you know, I just wanna make this really clear right from the get-go. I did this as an experiment. I am not responsible if you do this and the transmission gets worse. All I know is when I did it, I was presently surprised about the result I got. So, if you wanna do this, great, but I'm not responsible. Frankly, I have no idea if it will avoid a warranty. I have no idea if your local dealership will turn you away from service going forward. I don't know. Um, I've had my Ford Focus since 2000, 2016. It's a 2015 model year I bought it used. And I've taken it to the dealership once to get the oil changed. So I've never taken my car to the dealership. You know, I feared the transmission was always just gonna be herky-jerky and that's just the design. Uh, so for me, I don't have any dealership experience. I know the clutches on it were new at 27,000 miles and the car is, uh, you know, a little, little close to 70,000 miles. So I can't say if you should do this or not. My recommendation, just watch the video and decide for yourself. So let, with, that, so with that being said, let me just kinda explain what we're gonna be doing. Right here is a very basic diagram of what's under the hood of a Ford Focus. You know, you have your engine, your transmission, you have your ECU that controls these two, you have your battery, and here is where the car is grounded. Now, unlike older cars, say my Mustang, where there's ground wires everywhere, the Focus really only has this one big ground wire. Now, as you can tell, it goes from the negative battery cable all the way to this little post on the driver's side strut area. So if you ever had to give anyone a boost or you need to jump start your car, you're most likely going to be attaching it right there. And this here is the thing, as I mentioned, when it comes to my Mustang, which has grounds all over the place, this car only has one, that one. And what pretty much grounds out the car is not even, say, this metal plate, which uh, the negative uh, battery cable att attaches to. It's the threads of this bolt, because this is a bolt, and it bolts right into this uh, panel. And the only thing that's really grounding out this car is just the threads of this bolt to the threads of that panel. Um, in a moment, I'm gonna show you what that exactly looks like. But here's the situation that is actually happening with a Ford Focus and Fiesta with the power shift transmission. The car was designed for a stick shift. It was also designed for a conventional automatic. So for those two applications, this ground is sufficient. That's why uh, whenever it comes to transmission problems, you don't really hear about from the Fiesta ST, the RS, or any that are equipped with a, a stick shift transmission. However, the power shift transmission is a bit of a technological marvel and a bit of a rotten egg, according to a lot of people. See, the transmission, unlike a conventional transmission, which uses a torque converter and uses, you know, some transmission fluids and black magic that shifts the gears for you. This actually uses electric motors that moves uh, the, say, the two clutches, because uh, really uh, the, the pressure transmission is a manual transmission where the computer does the shifting and the clutch work. It has two clutches. And and uh, the electric motors, they're the ones that engage and disengage, along with shifting through the gears. That's a lot of little motors that require a lot of power. And here's the theory this ground is not sufficient enough for all these little motors, for all these little electric motors that need a good ground to work. So what happens, um, since there's all sorts of other little electronic things going on in the engine bay uh, with the computer, the computer says, okay, well, this is just how the car drives. Because the ECU is actually really smart. If you ever have unplugged your battery and replugged it back in, you'll notice that the car goes through a learning phase. And it will learn like, okay, well, 
This is how these little motors operate, not being completely grounded. That's just how it works, which is where we get the, you know, the, the hard shifting, the buckling, the shifting into the wrong gear. These motors don't aren't quite grounded. They're not quite getting the full circuit of juice that they need, the full circuit of electricity to perform great, which is where sometimes you'll have a transmission that will do like a one, two shift okay, but then two, three, like maybe it will miss it, maybe it'll grind, maybe it'll shift into fourth or fifth instead of third. These aren't getting the right enough power because it's having to share electricity with everything else. In a conventional automatic, which I think the one liter EcoBoost comes with, and in a stick shift, you don't have any of this. So right here, if you take away all those little motors and you have a different transmission, the car works great. These have such, it's, it's really kind of interesting. It's something so small and minute that I almost, I was shocked when I found that this little, like I guess, hack works. Um, or at least it worked on my car. And let me explain what we're gonna be doing. Now, see over here where I mentioned that um, on the negative battery case terminal, we have like this little plate right here that's all metal, and it goes on to this little uh, part of the, of the chassis. So underneath this plate, it's all painted. Only the threads of the bolt and the threads of this little plate are what's grounding the car. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking away some of that paint. That was not smooth. We're gonna be just removing a bit of the paint, mainly the paint that is going to be directly underneath this tab. When I go over the car, it'll make a lot more sense, but now, instead of having only the bolt and the threads which uh, the bolt goes into to ground into the car, you know, have the plate direct, the, this little plate directly contacting uh, the metal tab on the car's chassis, giving it a really, really strong uh, ground. And which means, you know, and, and of course, while you're doing this, you know, taking off the paint right here, the car's gonna be off, the battery's gonna be disconnected. So when the car goes into learn mode again, it's gonna relearn how the transmission is operating when uh, these little motors inside the transmission are now fully, you know, like full of electricity or properly grounded or not getting any, you know, electronic signal uh, dis uh, disrupted because it doesn't have enough ground. I know this sounds really weird, but I am just gonna show you guys how this works. And well, I'm just gonna show you guys how I did it, and from there you guys can decide. Uh, before we jump over to my car, let me show a couple things that you will be needing. So the nice thing about this little modification is that it's very cheap and you really don't need any tools. This is pretty much all I used. Uh, right here is a 13 millimeter wrench. Uh, this is a ratcheting one. It does not have to be ratcheting. I just have a whole set. Uh, this is what's gonna take off that little, um, you know, I, I guess that grounding post um, that attaches to the car. This is dielectric grease. This we'll use a little bit later. Um, I'll explain why. And here is some sandpaper. I used 150 grit, which is really rough. So it will absolutely eat off the paint. And let me go over and show you where you need to sand off and also what this uh, little electric grease is for. So let's jump over to the car. All right, guys, here we are in the engine bay of my Ford Focus. Um, we're right now on the driver hand side, and as you can tell, we have the fuse box right here. Here's the battery, air intake, and this is the area that we're gonna be focusing in on. So let me go ahead and adjust my camera over there. There we go. Okay, so as you can tell, yours is gonna look a little bit different. First, the area we're gonna be focusing in on, as you can tell right here. Um, on my car, I've already taken it off, so what you would do is you would take your 13 millimeter wrench or socket and you would take off this bolt. Now, once that comes off, um, you just simply pull this tab up and you'll see right here, as you can tell, like here's my car, it's black. But this is the paint, actually. Um, I removed all this paint with the sandpaper, so once you take this off, just go ahead and just sand down this area. Once you've done that, just go ahead and put uh, this back on. So after that, that's when you're gonna get your dielectric grease. With your dielectric grease, you're just gonna, you're gonna take this off and you're gonna put it over all the exposed metal and also on top of this little tablet. That's gonna help it prevent from rusting because we have pretty much have taken off the rust protection, which was the paint. So that way, as you can tell, you'll have metal on metal contact. So instead of just this bolt that's uh, you know grounding the car through uh, the threads in the chassis, you'll have the whole thing. As you can tell, it's pretty easy. Um, if you want, go ahead and disconnect the positive side of the battery first. You don't have to, I mean, you're disconnecting a battery either way, but sometimes when you take this off, there might be a spark or two. It might look a little nerve wracking. So if you want, go ahead and unplug the battery first. All right, guys, that pretty much wraps it up for this video on my Ford Focus. Now, as I said in the beginning of this video, I was really kind of surprised that this, this actually kind of worked. Uh, 
you know, as I mentioned earlier, I've been running my car with this modification on, the little, you know, just grounding mod, and for some reason, it is a hell of a lot better. It's not perfect, and, you know, fully disclaimer again, do this at your own risk. I figured for myself, I don't have that much to lose. The car hasn't had any trouble, but it just all makes sense. So if you like this type of video, or if you disagree with me, or if you have other ways to kind of help the, you know, the power shift six speed transmission in the Ford Focus, just go ahead and comment down below. I'm absolutely open to learning of other ways to make the car more reliable for other Ford Focus owners. Cause let's be honest, it kind of sucks that Ford has left us out to dry.